I want to thank all of you for turning me onto the string butler via your comments on my last video. I got one and I love it. I even like the way it looks. It does not harm the look of this headstock. I'm going to do an evaluation mostly based on pulling the G-string really hard because that's always the crux for me is that G-string going flat when I vibrato real hard or pull real hard. And then the second part of this video, which is just a couple of minutes away, my buddy Aiden Scrivens does a filmed installation for you that's very concise and I think quite impressive. <laughs> yeah, click the link below if you want to check out my online masterclass. So I have found with this guitar, uh, if I tune and then vibrato heavy and make sure that it's still sitting in tune without going flat, that's the best way for me to ensure some stability. So here I go pulling. It appears to have held uh, enough to satisfy me. I brought a little bit. Still holding. So now I'm going to bend it even further. Still holding. Still holding. but now it's a little flat. I wonder if I vibrato it, it'll come back up to pitch. No, so okay, let me pull it up. Pretty stable, I would say that the string butler works. Let me start from scratch. Okay, there's a trick. I didn't prep enough. You, I think you still have to prep. Maybe this. That does. Now it's a little sharp. See, that we still are getting an in inequity between here and here, but it can be solved with a little bit of preparation. this preparation to get this string in tune. I love the way Gibson's sound, and especially this guitar. I want to be able to play it and play in tune. It's really a tension thing. I think you just have to keep tuning and keep kind of vibratoing until the string finally settles in. Voila! Stable. It works! So Aiden, what are you about to do? So we're about to put this item right here, which is the string butler, just behind these two pegs here. And what this is going to do is make sure all the strings have that straight angle through the nut, which will help improve tuning stability. We can keep all the strings on. I'm just going to use this capo to capo them off here on the fifth fret. And then I can loosen up these strings, do the procedure easy as you like, and then get it back on. So, step one. We're going to capo off the strings at the 5th fret and then we can free the high and low E strings. Now we only actually need to take these two strings out of the posts because these are the only two pegs we're going to have to do anything with. The string butler fits under these two and all the others can remain unaltered. So we're going to use a capo, we're going to wrap that around. Hard to pinch in the high and low E strings just because that way you know that they're not going to slip off the end when all of a sudden the tension at this end of the capo is released. So now we're going to take our string winder, we're going to wind off and free the low E. So I'm going to try to use my hands to get it out. And then the high E. 
So now we have these two strings off and I'm actually going to go ahead and loosen up these other strings just so they're not encroaching on the space around the peg too much. But these are the only two that have to come all the way off. Now the next step is going to be taking these two posts out and fitting the string buffer. So, like I said, we've loosened up these extra four strings, so there's a lot more wiggle room, which we're going to need to get this guy underneath. So, first things first, we're going to take our trusty set of pliers. If you have the right size of one of these contraptions, you can get down and do it this way, but with a steady hand and a set of pliers, you can't go wrong either way. So we're going to start off here, and we're going to gingerly apply it, and as you see, it should turn off fairly easily. So, we've got this nut here coming up. We're going to take that guy off. We're also going to take the washer off. Now the reason we're going to take the washer off is because it's actually quite important that the string butler is straight flush onto the wood. And now we're going to do the same thing. Out that comes, and the washer as well. Now we're going to take the string butler, we're going to slip it underneath the low D and E strings, and this is why we've loosened up these other strings that we can just pull them up and get them around and in. Make sure these strings are back in their right places, and we have it here in place. Now we're going to run these strings the right side of the string butler. And it'll sort of hold it in place as you see here. And now we're going to take the washer and the peg and we're going to place them on top of the string butler. So we see here it's nicely in place. Now we're going to make sure the goal of the string butler is to make sure that the strings come directly straight out of the nut. So we'll line it up to where these strings are coming straight through the nut. And at that point, when we found it, we will tighten these screws in place. And it will hold down the string butler in the right spot. A little tightening, it sits firmly in place, and now all we need to worry about is getting these strings back on and everything tuned up again. I thought I'd give you guys a little close-up of the string butler itself. You see these sort of separate parts here, these slightly fatter parts on the individual posts of the string butler. They slide up and down freely, but when everything's brought to tension, they should sit at the bottom just like this. Now they have grooves in them that the strings are meant to sit in. And as you can see here, they will come straight through the nut, go into these grooves where they will then break off to the tuning peg.